Look around your neighborhood. What makes it tick? Is it the food, the architecture, or simply the people? From Topayo to Geylang, Jurong to Tiong Bahru, each neighborhood has its own unique identity. History. And each character will tell you a different story. One neighborhood, many different ways to see it. This is a journey into our heartlands as we travel through our hometowns and show how life has evolved right at your doorstep. This is Project Neighborhood. This is a story of a neighborhood that is perhaps very different from any other. We know her as a bustling industrial heartland. Where thousands of people work in the biggest industrial zone in the country. She has perhaps planted the seeds to Singapore's industrial age, with an output that would help triple the island's industrial economy in just 10 years. And she had humble beginnings. Jurong did not have any of these things before. No roads, no drainage, no sanitation, no power. So this was the advantage which Jurong had. It was an undeveloped frontier for Singapore. From mangroves to industrial giant. But the story of Jurong is more than that. Just around the corner from the industrial heartland, she is also a modern town. More than 300,000 people live in the HDB heartlands around the area. Town centers provide every known amenity that is needed for the residents here. And no other neighborhood can boast of a natural landscape. A world-class bird park and other forms of recreation built into the town. She is unlike any other estate we know of today. Jurong is perhaps a small, self-sufficient city. And she has given the people of this heartland a chance to make a life for themselves. From the people who have made a career out of serving the people in Jurong. To the age-old industry of pottery, and even for some people with pretty unique skills. We are basically from the young ones, so we mix. Most of them are like our siblings here. I learn a lot of things down here. So I want my kids to actually feel, you know, this, this environment. The story of Jurong is intertwined in the land and its people. This is a land of opportunities. Bagi bagi saya Jurong ni tempat uh, ibarat macam lombong emas. At Jurong itself, to Pasir Laba, we were able to carry out up to battalion training. We used to do field craft at Jurong Bird Park even. Jukun we used for uh, farmland, used to use for navigation. We trained even up to defence for company training at the Hindu Cemetery in Sungai Buloh. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old you'll have a place in Jurong. She was once the training ground for the first batch of national servicemen. 
and she's still enriching the minds of the young. The story of Jurong is one of a land of opportunities. Located on the western edge of the island, Jurong is made up of three different areas. This single neighborhood takes up almost a seventh of the total land mass in Singapore. It is indeed a big place, one that's also the industrial heartland of the country. More than a thousand companies and heavy industries dot her landscape. In land scarce Singapore, Jurong Island alone generates almost 5% of the country's economic output each year. The town of Jurong plays quite a big part in our island's history. So because Jurong did not have any of these things before, no roads, no drainage, no sanitation, no power, so it was possible to develop the whole place at one go. Uh, the, the other parts of Singapore already had some facilities, so it was just much harder to transform. So Jurong therefore had the advantage of being uh, not transformed and therefore capable of being transformed onto a large scale. So this was the advantage which uh, Jurong had. It was an undeveloped frontier for Singapore. It's a story of how Jurong literally rose out of nothing to become an industrial giant and opened up a world of opportunities. According to historical sources, the name Jurong came from the word Jarung, which means shark in Malay. This area was home to one of the biggest mangrove swamps in Singapore. As the island became independent, its economic future became a priority. In 1961, plans were set in motion by the Economic Development Board that would change the course of the country's history. The old mangrove swamps of Jurong were slated to become the seat of Singapore's industrial economy. And that's why when the industry started coming in, encouraged by the EDB, they picked Jurong because Jurong had the state-of-the-art facilities for all the industries to operate uh, almost immediately, without having to wait for further time. And it was also close to the port uh, and also close to the railway uh, from uh, the causeway. So it had a geographical uh, advantage uh, in terms of uh, supplies coming in from abroad and from the uh, peninsula mainland. This was a massive undertaking. The plan was to triple Singapore's economy within 10 years. By 1971, more than 250 factories were established in the area, ranging from light industries like woodworking to shipbuilding and semiconductor industries. 30,000 people were recruited to start work in Jurong. It was perhaps the first signs of the job opportunities that this new neighborhood would provide. 71-year-old Mr. Chu Tae-kyao worked in Jurong during the early years. He recalls his time as a technician in a woodworking factory in 1963. <laughs> 工作啊每次从那边做工到晚上
呃 engineer， 啊、呃，做三家板，那么操纵机器啊，那么薪水比较增加一点。今年是工作是工钱才，呃，百五块钱一个月，那么升到两百多块，就是生活比较好好一点过。But as Jurong started housing bigger industries, it provided Mr. Chu with the chance to explore different opportunities in the area. In 1980, he moved over to the shipping industry in the Jurong shipyards. What全都做啊,還有做中國香港,哦,那麼我是做做做了,那是申請了就做接間呢,特級工業了,啊,可以的工業,呃,一九八零年,八一年就做一夜就開始做你們了,文理這邊特級工業,過開始工業用固定的工
modern industries have replaced old factories of the past. The original industrial zones have been expanded to include two offshore islands that are dedicated to the petrochemical industry. Jurong's economic output has increased tenfold from its early years in the 1960s. And she now employs nearly 40,000 workers on Jurong Island alone. This is a thriving industrial neighborhood. But just like its past, Jurong is changing again. Her new industries are going green. A new clean tech park for ecologically friendly industries will be built, paving the way for a cleaner future. Well, the industrial age was characterized by high level of pollution uh, due to carbon uh, usage. Uh, and Singapore, in fact, uh, probably contributes more to pollution than what it receives, yeah, because we're an island. So, uh, there's a, a, a good cause for, for Singapore to move into green industries. The clean tech belt, spanning an area of 50 hectares, will house eco-friendly factories and industries such as renewable energy, water and environment technologies. It will be ready by 2015. It will perhaps open up a new wealth of opportunities in this neighborhood. But the story of Jurong is not just about hard work. It's about the people. She has provided new businesses for the community. Even for some other uncommon areas of work. It's a story about the land of opportunities, one that is not only found in the industries and heartlands of this neighborhood, but in some other surprising areas of Jurong. There are nooks and crannies here that are pretty far removed from the hustle and bustle of Singapore life. Jurong has also provided the opportunities for other living things to survive and flourish. The Jurong Bird Park provides a chance for Singaporeans to marvel and learn about our feathered friends and has been doing so for 40 years. She is a neighborhood with many other alternative forms of recreation for the people. This is truly a special neighborhood. But some, however, remember Jurong as an area that provided the opportunity to defend the nation. She once molded the nation's young boys into fighting men. As Singapore became independent, defending this new nation was one of its priorities. The National Service Bill was passed in Singapore during the late 1960s. It then became compulsory for young men to be drafted into military service. The first batch of 900 men began training as part of the 3rd and 4th Singapore Infantry Regiment at Taman Jurong Camp in March of 1967. The vast undeveloped regions of this neighborhood provided good spaces for the training grounds of this new conscript army. And one man helped with the task of shaping these young Singaporeans into fighting fit national servicemen. He describes how the instructors had to make do with what they had in Jurong. We did it at Jurong Primary School because the camp at Pasaleba was not ready yet. At the first level of primary school, we had the administration. The second level was the instruction room and the third level dormitory for all of us. There were 60 of us uh, trainees, 
from the volunteers, from the regulars of 2SR and 1SR, also from the police. We have to do a basic standard training for the future instructor to train the future army of Singapore uh, so that there will be uh, standardizations to build up the doctrines. They came, they saw, they conquered. Jurong was a place where these raw recruits shed their blood, sweat and tears in basic military training and grew up. Mr. Lam Chun Si remembers his hard times in Taman Jurong camp. Because we are, we are training in uh, public areas, sometimes we ended up in farms. Those village folks, when we were doing our firing training using the blanks, they, they come around and pick up the empty cartridges. Apparently, there are some metal that they can uh, sell. We were the first to exploit the terrain for field craft, for battle craft, for individual and collective training. Really. The terrain there is both you have closed and open terrain. We provide us for all kinds of trainings. At Jurong itself, to Pasilaba, we were able to carry out up to battalion training. You have hills those days at Tanjung Gu. We used to do defence uh, on the top of the hills. We used to do field craft at Jurong Bird Park even. Jukun we used for uh, farmland, used to use for navigation. We trained even up to defence for company training at the Hindu Cemetery in Sungai Buloh. And uh, we do tank training at uh, Jalai Murai and Track 11 area. At that time in Singapore, I think most of the residents were in the east. I suppose we want to maximize the kind of terrain that we can use for field craft and battle craft. And uh, there were less uh, people around to interfere, except for the few farmers around. So. Jurong Camp is still around today, but it is no longer the training camp for national servicemen. But back in the day, this neighborhood provided opportunities for fresh new challenges for its young men as they embarked on a new phase of life. And just around the corner from here, Jurong is still a place that holds new opportunities for the future of Singapore. The Nanyang Technological University, a higher learning institution that was established in 1955, has made this neighborhood its home. Close to 7,000 students graduate every year from here and enter the workforce. And in a small lecture theater of this university, a group of students found the opportunity to share a common interest in something that some Singaporeans are perhaps a little bit crazy about, K-pop. Twenty-three-year-old Ms. Chuk Xiao Ling has been interested in Korean culture ever since she started school here. And the Korean Cultural Society here in NTU has provided her the opportunity to literally put on her dancing shoes. Performing Korean pop dance that has been made famous by K-pop groups in South Korea today. My first year in November, there was a small group of students actually approached me and uh, sort of like asking me if I have interest in K-pop dance. So at that point of time, I did not hesitate. Slowly uh, became one of the active members and eventually become the director of this Korean dance program. Besides knowing their culture, I think it's also an uh, experience for me to know what is their values. 
in future when I have to work with different people from different nationality, I think it gives me a better experience for me to get around with people from different nationality. It's quite an interesting turn of events. The school has provided Xiaoling with the opportunity to study, and the Korean Cultural Society has given her the chance to show off her skills to other people. Right here in Jerome. But the story of Jurong is not just about hard work. It's about the people. She has provided new businesses for the community, even for some other uncommon areas of work. The story of Jurong is not just about its thriving industry. It's about some of the people of this neighborhood who came to the mainland and took advantage of the business opportunities in this new area. Being an infant town, Jurong had the opportunity to emulate other satellite towns that came before it and it looks just like the HDB heartlands that we know of today. Close to 350,000 people live in the estates of this neighborhood. They came to the area during the 1970s as the new estates were being built. The emphasis was to build the facilities for industry. So only later on, uh, were HDB estates built there. So uh, as time progressed, uh, new townships were developed, like Jurong East, Jurong West, Trachokang. So in that sense, we, we see a parallel in Singapore that the emphasis was first on getting jobs, and then people can then move to where the jobs were. So in that way, uh, it, it is synonymous with the growth of Singapore, first jobs, then uh, people, and then education. Jurong Island, 32 square kilometers of heavy industries. She houses one of the largest oil refineries in the world today. Just a little more than 50 years ago, however, Jurong Island was home to some of the early residents of this new town. The islands of Jurong were made up of three main areas, Pulau Ayat Chawan, Pulau Melimau, and Pulau Merbau. The biggest island was a mere two square kilometers. These were home to more than 700 villagers who worked as fishermen. As the industries of Jurong were being developed on these islands, they were resettled on the Singapore mainland during the 1970s. A massive housing program was then undertaken. Within 10 years, flats, amenities, and everything needed in a residential estate was developed in Jurong. It was the start of a new life for these early residents. Mr. Undong Kazmani and Madam Nyonya Muhammad Shah lived in Pulau Dama Laut since the 1940s. They were moved to the new estates of Bunle in the late 1960s. Mula-mula, mana yang kita pergi pun mula-mula mesti kita merasa kekok atau pasal apa tempat baru. Suasana kita tidak tidak apa tak tak begitu apa selesa kan. Jadi terpaksa lah kita uh, memaksa diri kita untuk 
tetap meninggal di tempat itu dan pertama juga kita cuba macam mana sedaya upaya sehingga kan berapa bulan baru kita dapat menyuaikan diri. And Mr Untung Kasmani took advantage of the new opportunities that this heartland provided them. He used his culinary skills to whip up an old traditional Malay dish for the residents of this new town. Nasi Lama. Now Boonle's power Nasi Lama is somewhat of a household name in this neighborhood. Five branches have opened up in various parts of the island. A testament to the hard work that they have put in here for the past 40 years. Pukul 4 pagi, kita dah start memasak. Pukul 6 setengah, kita buka lah jualan. Jadi dah jam 3, ada orang pun siapkan untuk petang. Jadi pekerja pun ditukar lah. Dah tu kita buka pukul 6 petang. Teruslah sampai malam. It is a small reflection of life in this big neighborhood. A new town that rose alongside the industries and provided big opportunities for the heartlanders in some small ways. And in another part of the area, one man found an opportunity to make a different sort of living in Jurong. In a quiet corner of the Muslim cemetery in Jurong, workers are preparing for another day. They are part of a funeral logistics business that has been plying their trade at the Chua Chu Kang Cemetery along Jurong Road for over two decades. Offering their services to take care of the departed. Roslan Kamat is the second generation of his family to run this business. Area Jurong ni saya rasa eh memang tempatlah tempat mungkin dia hujung dekat Ulu Tanjung. Jadi satu Singapura semua bila ada kematian, kematian tak kira Cina, Melayu, India, Muslim, Kristian, semua dekat Jurong. Mungkin di sini tempat 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 macam saya ni meniaga, mencari dapur apa ni, mencari rezeki, mungkin ni tempat dia. Jadi ini bagi bagi saya Jurong ni tempat uh, ibarat macam lombong emas. Uh, inilah tempat mungkin area saya sini cari du, cari makan. Jadi semua area Jurong. Saya terbabit dalam kerja Pak Kubu ni masa masa pertama kali bila bapa saya baru meninggal. So selalu saya datang kat Kubu sini. Jadi dekat sini saya rasa this is a place boleh buat duit lah. Jadi saya ada mak cik saya pak lah uh, dalam bidang ni saya ikut mak cik saya lah sampai sekarang. Saya rasa hampir nak dekat uh, 17 tahun. His company is a one-stop shop for funerals, handling everything from the construction of tombstones and caskets to the burial and maintenance of the graves. It's a business that has changed through the years. Dapur-dapur dulu sama dapur-dapur sekarang biasa. Dah kalau kita nak ikutkan blok 1, blok 2 sampai blok 14 eh dekat kubur lama tu, kubur saya tengok pun standard sama aje bentuk dia. Tapi zaman sekarang ni kubur beza. Tak saya pun tak tahu mungkin orang Melayu kita dah ada perubahan atau mungkin sekarang orang Melayu kita ada ke ke keuangan kelebihan. Ya zaman dulu sekarang kubur dah ada kubur macam kubur bulat, ada dua tingkat, ada timbak-timbak nama. It is perhaps a reflection of the abundant opportunities that are presented to the people in this neighborhood. Even in areas of work that we don't normally associate any other neighborhood with. This neighborhood is more than it seems. She is a land of opportunities. 
but she has also fostered strong communities. And some have even brought different talents to this heartland. It's a story about the opportunities that this neighborhood has provided. Jurong has created jobs for her people. Even in some uncommon areas of work. And provided other alternative forms of recreation. And she has also provided spaces for our young people to train. The story of this neighborhood is also about the communities that have thrived here. As they say, all work and no play makes Jurong somewhat of a dull neighborhood. As the sun sets in Pandan Gardens, some residents here are coming together. Tonight, more than 20 young Jurong residents are throwing a small party to celebrate a monthly reunion. They have formed strong bonds of friendship in this small area. Their parents arrived here from the offshore islands of Jurong more than 50 years ago. We are the pioneers here. We are basically from the young ones, so we mix. Most of them are like our siblings here. All of us know one another, which block we stay, which unit. So it's like every year is a gathering. Actually, Hari Raya, we will meet up one another to the same place that we have our own traway, the same place, everyone. hang around, hang around under the void deck, we used to play guitar, we used to sing, we were always stop around 10 o'clock. What we normally do when we want to come down, we will uh, sound a whistle, a signal. <laughs> oh, that's a whistle! When this, when everybody hear that, everybody hear that whistle, so it's time for everybody else to hear that. It is perhaps a reflection of the new sense of togetherness that this new neighborhood gave these young ones. Jurong has given their parents, who came from the islands, a new place to live. And their children now call it home. Some have even found love here. Down here in Pandan, there's a lot of soccer boys. Nah. They play, they play soccer. Uh, I'll be at my window, they just look at the crush downstairs. I kind of had a teenage crush with him back then, you know. Yeah, whenever I go down, when I was a kid, I was always asked to run errands. He, he will be there lah, with his guitar, playing. After getting married, and then I stay in a three-room flat, which is still in Pandan, and I move house, still in Pandan, in, 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 in this area. So it's it's like, I don't think I can move out from this place. Lah. The, the memories is too much, you know, especially me and my husband, especially my husband. Lah. I live here for more than 30 years. 
I learn a lot of things down here. So I want my kids to actually feel, you know, this this environment. Besides at Boon Lay, Teban Gardens and stuff, right? But if we were to shift down there, we're going to be apart from our actual family. That's why we want to stay here. It is a sense of community that has also inspired people with unique talents. Ms. Huang Su Ying arrived in Singapore 20 years ago. She has been living and working in Jurong ever since then. And this Taiwanese lady has a pretty special skill. Diabolo, or Chinese yo-yo. Having trained in this skill for nearly 10 years, she now teaches it to the children in a neighborhood primary school. Handing down her knowledge of an art form that was developed centuries ago in China to the heartlanders in Jurong today. Chiling it doesn't matter whether you're male or female, young or old. You would always have the chance to make something of yourself in Juro. This neighborhood is unlike any other. Its industries have helped boost our island's economy and also provided spaces for different types of work. Some remember her as the place where they trained hard. With a natural landscape and recreational facilities that are worlds apart from any other area of Singapore. And her residents have also made Jurong their home. 